Hello everyone, welcome to VTU e-Sekshana. Myself, Mr. Nitin Kumar, working as an assistant professor in Department of Computer Science and Engineering, Vidyavartaka College of Engineering, Mysuru. I am the course expert for mobile application development. The subject code is 18CS651. Firstly, I would like to thank the person who has framed this syllabus as an open elective. Why? Because the contents which are present in this particular syllabus, it is completely correlated with the contents which are available in Google for certification program. So if we divide the syllabus, so the syllabus consists of five modules. Out of those five modules, the first two modules deals with activities and intents and the basic designs, how to design the mobile application. So the remaining three modules deals with how to publish an application, what are the security features that you have to consider in your mobile applications while development, along with that, how to make use of databases and how to develop an interactive application that you are going to learn. So totally five modules, the contents which are present in this five modules will make the syllabus of Associate Android Developer Certification. So if you are done with the contents of this five modules, you can easily take up the certification examination that is provided by the Google on Android platform. The certification name is Associate Android Developer Certification, so which can be taken in two languages, one is either in Java or in Kotlin. As per your syllabus that is present in VTU, so the subject is should be taught using Java programming language. Coming to the subject, my subject name is Mobile Application Development and the code is 18CS651. So before we start with the what is development and other things, firstly we should know what is mobile application. What is mobile application? So why because without knowing what is mobile applications, so it is not possible to understand what is development. So coming to this mobile application means nothing but the Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, the apps that you are going to use in your mobile. Such applications are called mobile applications. Don't feel that only the applications that you are going to use in your mobiles are mobile application. Even in your smart watches, we can develop the mobile applications for smart watches. We can develop the mobile application nowadays for automotive, such as for example, the sound system present in your car, that's also in a mobile application. And for example, the nowadays the TV, uh, smart TV, the name is Android TV, that will also make use of Android. So coming to this mobile application, so it's nothing but the applications that you are going to develop for mobile devices are called mobile applications. So we can divide this mobile applications into three categories, the development. Developing the mobile application for your mobile devices is called mobile application development which can be categorized into three categories. One is based on Android. One is completely based on Android operating system. Android operating system, it's nothing but a Linux based operating system. It's an open source. Other one is based on iOS. I guess you are uh, well versed with this term iOS. Why? Because iOS is nothing but it is commonly used. It is commonly used only in Apple devices. So next one is Flutter. These are the three ways or these are the three platforms that we have for developing the mobile applications. So what is this Android mobile application development means? So Android mobile development means, so where we are going to make use of an, a tool by name Android Studio by name Android Studio to develop the Android application. So if you develop the application by using this Android Studio means, so it will work only in your Android devices. The applications which are developed by using this Android Studio will be compatible only with the Android devices. Similarly, if you develop applications using iOS means those application will be compatible only with the Apple devices. 
such as Apple smartphones, Apple tabs. So, Saf, whatever the application that you are going to develop by using this iOS platform, which will be compatible with the Apple devices. So, coming to this Flutter, so this is also called as an hybrid platform. What is this hybrid platform means? So, whatever the applications that you are going to develop by using this Flutter will be compatible both with the Apple devices as well as Android devices. So, coming to this, uh, these are the frameworks that we are going to use Android Studio, iOS, and Flutter. So, which are all the languages? Why? Right? Because framework is not a complete development tool, framework is a tool, that is it. So, inside the framework, you have to make use of programming language to develop the applications. So, which are all the programming languages we need to use? The programming languages that we are going to use for the Android application development is Java as well as Kotlin. So, initially, when I started working with this Android in year 2016, it was completely Java. There was no Kotlin at all. So, in 2020, this Kotlin award. So, by 2023, Google is giving a statement that they are going to completely remove this Java and they are going to replace the Kotlin for mobile application development. But the thing is, so the framework will remain the same. Just the change, change that is happening here is only the programming language will change. Previously, it was Java. Now, we have Kotlin. Next, down the line, there might be some other user friendly programming language may arrive that we can use for the mobile application development. The programming languages will keep on changing, but the framework will remain the same. The outcome of this subject is you must learn how to make use of this Android studio. Do not worry about this program. Why? Because the programming languages will keep on changing, but the framework will remain the same. Similarly, with respect to iOS dev devices, the Apple devices, the programming language that we are going to use right now is Swift. The programming language that we are using is Swift programming language we will use to develop the Apple applications which will be compatible only with the iOS devices. Coming to the programming language that we are going to use with respect to Flutter is Dart, D-A-R-T, Dart. So, if you develop, what is the advantage of this Flutter application means? So, whatever the application, mobile application that you are going to develop using Flutter will be compatible both with the iOS as well as Android OS. That is the advantage of Flutter. But as per your syllabus, coming to confining to your syllabus, these are the three ways you can develop the mobile application. One is by using Android, other one is by using iOS, other one is by using Flutter. So, if we confine your syllabus, so as per your syllabus, you must learn how to make use of Android Studio using Java. This is your complete syllabus. The syllabus that is present in 18 CS 651 deals with Android Studio using Java programming language. So, why? Why I need to study this particular subject? What is the importance? What is the importance? Just if you understand just if you look at the global market. So, when I was a student, so I need, I, I used to go to web applications, I need to browse the web applications to get the required information or features. But nowadays, whatever the web applications are there, for them, the corresponding mobile app will be there in your Google Play Store. That indicates the importance of this subject. So, as the number of application increases, the number of roles for the mobile application developer increases. So, if you know this mobile application development, you can easily, you can easily be industry ready. So, coming to this mobile application development, how many users are there? So, if you consider 100 percent mobile percent mobile users in world, in world, out of 100 percent, 71% users are Android users. 71% users are using Android. So, in India, if you consider this scenario in India, 
95% users are Android users. As I mentioned earlier, there are only three flavors of mobile applications and three flavors of operating systems. So Android operating system and iOS devices. Other than that, we, may have, we will have uh, Microsoft, uh, uh, Nokia, Lumia, such devices and uh, their market is very low. So if you consider the world market, out of 100%, 71% users are using Android phones. So in India, especially in India, 95% users are using Android devices. So remaining 5%, 3.2% belongs to Apple users and remaining other like Blackberry and uh, iOS and uh, Microsoft users, Microsoft Lumia, Nokia devices. Okay. So this is the importance of su this subject. Why? Because the graph is gradually growing. Initially in 2014, it was some, uh, 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 presently now in India, there are 1.1 billion users are there using smartphones. So 1.1 billion users are using the mobile devices. Out of 1.1 billion users, 700, 700 million users are connected to internet, means they are using smartphones. Out of 700 million users, 94% users are based on Android. That's the importance of this subject. Why I, you need to learn this subject? So forget it. Okay. So I know only one uh, programming language. So just what's the importance of this subject? So if you know this subject, so you can survive anywhere in your in a industry. Why? Because this, this subject is having a huge scope. Though just analyze this market out of 1.4, billion population, 1.1 billion use population is using smartphones. So out of those 1.1 billion, 700 million phones are connected to the internet, means they are using smartphones. So out of 700 million, 95% users are Android based. That's the importance of this subject. That's why I conveyed thanks to the person who has framed this subject as an open elective. So coming to this subject, firstly, I'm going to provide a brief overview on Android application development. Why? Because as I mentioned earlier, as I mentioned earlier, so Android application development, so your subject completely confines towards the Android application development using Java. So we can develop the Android application in two ways. One is by using Java programming language, other one is by using Kotlin programming language. As per the syllabus present, so we have to use Java in Android Studio. The tool that we are going to use is Android Studio. So firstly, I'm going to brief the basic building blocks. Basic building blocks so of Android. So we have three basic building blocks in Android. So first one is activities. First one is activities. Second one is intents. Third one is services. So if you learn these three features, if you learn, if you are done with this basic building blocks of Android, you are done with your whole syllabus, you are done with the whole syllabus of Google Associate Android Developer Certification. So I will take one by one. So what is this basic building blocks? We, what is this activities, intents, and services? So firstly, basic building blocks means, so this all three together, we will, will make the mobile application using Android. There should be activities. There should be intents. There should be services. These three put together will frame a mobile application. What is this activity, sir? So activity is nothing but a blank white sheet like this. Okay. So it's an empty activity. It's a blank white paper. Whatever you want, you can design here. I, I need a button. I will place it. I need a text to indicate my name. I will place it. Whatever you want, you can design in this blank paper. Such thing is called an activity. Such thing is called activity. So I, uh, if, you are, if you know about the web application, so for example, there might be 500 web pages, 
500 web pages together we call it as a website if you consider our video website there might be around 1000 web pages together we call it as video website video.ac.in similarly there might be n number of activities n number of activities together we call it as a single mobile application so please remember one thing one activity means it's nothing but a blank white sheet blank white sheet so where whatever the feature whatever the attribute whatever the widget that you want like button text box or whatever you want you are going to place inside that activity okay so such activities n number of activities together we call it as a single mobile application similarly how 500 web pages together we call it as a website so five consider 500 websites just assume 500 web pages are there in VTU website 500 web pages together we call it as a single website similarly n number of activities there might be 100 activities together we call it as a whatsapp application so if you just if you check your whatsapp application just you can uh, check the scroll bar just uh, in the uh, navigation pane itself you can find the three options one is chart other one is message other one is status so chart itself is a separate activity status itself is a separate activity chart itself is a separate activity call itself is a separate activity just by clicking on the chart it will open the message related thing just by clicking on the status it will open the status just clicking on the call it will open the call means so you are transiting between the three activities like that 100 activities together call it as a single application there is no constraint that there might be n activities itself to make a single application even a single activity we can, we can call it as a single application but to serve the purpose we need more than one activity together we call it as a single mobile application just make sure that what is activity is nothing but a blank sheet blank white page where we are going to design our requirements so coming to this intents coming to this intents intents are nothing but user intentions user intentions what is that user intention means user intentions so user intentions means just uh, uh, i don't know how many of you are watching this video uh, are the users of facebook or instagram so in this facebook you will uh, come across some news articles so if you click on that news articles it will ask the help of google chrome or opera mini browser to open that article that means so you are present in facebook application from the facebook application to complete that action you need another application by name google chrome so such kind of intentions are called as an user intentions there are two types of user intentions one is explicit other one is implicit these are the two types of intents which are present in android one is explicit other one is implicit what is this explicit means what is this implicit means simple explicit means so if the communication is happening within the application if the communication is happening within your mobile app such intentions are called explicit intentions for example this is my whatsapp application where i have three tabs where i have three tabs one is chat other one is status other one is call so if i click on this call it will open the call re related things which are present in your account that means you are not accessing the other application you are transiting from one activity to the this is my main activity this is my main page right this is what you are going to get when you open the whatsapp with three options chat status call so if i click on call it will open the activity the corresponding to call similarly if i click on status it will open the activity related to status means just observe so there will be a back button if you click on this back button it will come back to the home page or main page main activity so here what i'm doing here i'm transiting between the two activities which are present inside the whatsapp application inside which application inside the whatsapp application this kind of transition is called as an explicit transition 
are explicit user intentions where the transition is going to happen within the application itself. So what is then explicit? Between the two applications. Between the two applications. For example, consider your, so your, you have chat, so I am the user, I have sent one link, vtu.ac.in. So you will, you will click on this message. So if you click on this message, your WhatsApp doesn't have the feature to open its own browser. So it will ask, it will open a pop-up indicating whether you need to open it with Google Chrome, other whether you need to open with Opera Mini. So you, if I select Google Chrome, it will open the VTU website, vtu.ac.in. Just observe here, this is my WhatsApp application. From the WhatsApp, from the WhatsApp application, I am opening my Google Chrome. This kind of intentions are called explicit intents. Make it simple. Explicit means if the transition is happening within the application. Means with whatever the application that I am having, I am not transiting between the two applications. I am transiting within my app. For example, in WhatsApp, how you are going to transit between the chat, status, and call options. So implicit intents means, so if you try to open a URL, it will ask the help of browser. So it will be opened using the browser. Means your WhatsApp application is making use of browser to complete the task. Such kind of intents are called implicit intents. This is the second building block that we are going to use in our Android application development or the term mobile application development. So coming to the last building block that is nothing but services. So please remember one thing with respect to services. We have lot of already available services which is present in Android Studio. Just the thing is you must know how to use them. You are not going to de design something new. Just for example, I need to create a database. The SQLite service is already available. We have SQLite. Just the thing is, you must know how to use that SQLite in your mobile application development. For example, I need to create alarm application. We have already have alarm service in this Android studio. Just the thing is, you must know how to use that alarm service so to create alarm application. So for example, I'm going to use, I'm going to create a music player. We already have a music application which are running, which are already present in the Android studio. Just the thing is, you must know how to make use of this kind of services, okay, that can be used in your mobile apps. So these three put together will make any mobile application. Make it simple. The, the syllabus is simple. Just the thing is, what is activity? Whenever you're going to create a project, whenever you're going to create an application. So it will open a blank page where you're going to design your requirements. That's what we call activity. So one activity will not make the mobile application. N activities together, we call it as a single mobile application. What is intents? It's nothing but user intention. For example, I'm present in chat of WhatsApp. I need to go to status. This kind of intentions are called explicit intents, where you are going to transit within the application, within the application. Implicit intents. So for example, if my friend has sent a URL, I will click on that URL. So it will ask the browser to complete the task. Such if the transition is happening between the application, such intents are called implicit intents. So next, services, the basic services which are required for any application development is already available in Android Studio, just the thing is, you must know how to use them, that's it. So whatever, the, for example, I need to create a text-to-speech application, so which is already available, text-to-speech service is already available, just you must know how to use that service. What are the prerequisites? What are the uh, programming constructs that you need to use? Okay, the function is already available, just the thing is, you must learn how to use them. So before we start with the development, make sure that so the basic requirements for using, for developing Android application is you must have a system with i5 or i7 configuration. The device should be 
the device so to run the android studio the device requirement is you must have a mission with i5 or i7 or greater along with that minimum 8 gb ram minimum 8 gb ram these are the device requirements to run android studio or to develop the mobile application so if you try with i3 processor devices with 4 gb ram it's highly impossible to develop any android application the minimum requirement the minimum this is not the maximum one the minimum requirement means you must have a device with i5 plus or i5 or above processor with 8 gb ram capability then only you can execute the android studio code or then only you can develop the mobile applications using the android studio the framework throughout our syllabus the framework that we are going to use is android studio and the language that we are going to use is java so the concepts that we are going to cover throughout our syllabus is activities intents and services so first two modules deals with the activities and intents so the remaining three modules deals with the services where you are going to learn how to create a database how to retrieve the data how to show share how to save the shared preferences how to publish an application how to develop an alarm like such things are you are going to learn in the remaining three modules this is the overview of the subject mobile application development with the subject code 18 cs 651 one as i mentioned earlier there are five modules present in your syllabus the subject name is mobile application development with subject code 18 cs 651 so coming to the module number 1 so you will have five contents five topics that i am covering in this module are which are all the which are present in your syllabus the first is so introduction to what is android you are going to learn what is android what is versions why you need versions and what is android architecture that things you are going to learn in introduction to android followed by you are going to develop the first application you are going to build the first mobile application with hands on experience next layout what is layout what is view what is resources such things you are going to learn here how to make use of available layouts we have a wide variety of layouts which are readily available for the design purpose followed by event handling so for example i have added a button to my design so if i do some actions how that event will be handled how the actions will be recognized such things are discussed in this event handling followed by activities what's the life cycle of activity when the activity starts when the activity resumes when the activity is dead such things you are going to learn here followed by intents as i mentioned earlier in intents you are going to learn about two types of intents one is explicit other one is implicit finally so how to test or debug the mobile application this is the overview of the syllabus that is present in module number 1 starting with the what is android you are going to develop a simple application finally you are going to we are going to conclude this particular module 1 with testing and debugging so coming to this android what is that android means why 90% of indians are using android mobile phones not the ios or other why in world out of 100% 71% users are using android why because the android is an open source so even if you want to develop an application you can develop by using android studio and you can execute that application without any hurdles you don't need any high end configuration systems or you don't want uh, uh you want to you don't want to purchase any license why because it's an open source so it it will be based on the linux kernel what is that linux kernel means so please remember one thing we have three flavors of operating systems we have three flavors of operating system one is linux kernel based that is nothing but open source linux kernel based is an open source one other one is windows third one is apple or ios we have three flavors of operating systems linux based windows based and ios based where the linux based is an open source that makes that's the added advantage or that makes this android studio famous so what is this android who invented this android so the android so initially the android was developed by andy rubin and team 
So there are four people, four members who worked and this Android and developed this Android studio or Android application developer. and you might be shocked why they have developed this. So they have developed this for DG cameras, digital cameras. But it gained popularity when it was used in smartphones. In year 2005, so this Android is overtaken by Google. So from then onwards, it's a product that comes under Google Corporation. Okay, so that makes, it's an open source, that makes, that's the great advantage of this Android. So user, inter, generally this Android will be used in touch screens and uh, smart devices. So over 80% of smartphones all over the world makes use of this Android operating system. So please remember one thing, Android is not a name of mobile device. Android is a name of operating system which is based on the Linux kernel. Okay. So we, we have three flavors of operating systems such as Windows, Linux and iOS. Out of those three flavors, Linux is an open source one. So that will be used in the Android. Okay. Initially it was developed by Andy Rubin and team. In 2005 it was overtaken by Google. So from then onwards till 2022, it's a product, Android is the application or Android Studio is a product that comes under Google Corporation. So that uh, applications which are developed for this Android will cover watches, TVs, cars. So we have around 2 billion Android apps in Google Play Store. That shows the importance of this subject. Mobile application development, it's not a theoretical subject, it's a practical subject. So where you are going to learn how to develop the mobile application, the two, the one framework, which is, which is the number one framework. Why? Because around 90%, 95% of Indian users are using that framework. The name is Android. So over 2 million Android applications are available in Google Play Store. This, this shows the importance of this subject and highly customized devices and windows. So please remember one thing, the applications which are developed in Android, which can be easily customized, there is no constraints such as for example, if you want to develop an application for iOS, so you have to develop the application in Apple device itself. It's not possible to develop the application in some other device and deploy it to Apple. Okay, so such constraints are the restrictions which are not present in Android devices. As I mentioned earlier, the main advantage, why it has gained the popularity because of it is a open source one. So coming to this Android studio, as I mentioned earlier, what is Android? Android is just a operating system. What is this Android studio? It's nothing but, it's nothing but a framework. So throughout our syllabus, throughout the five modules, the framework that we are going to use is Android Studio. What is this Android Studio? It's an official Android IDE, official Android framework, where by using this official Android framework, you can develop the Android applications. Okay, so what are the features that are provided in this Android Studio? Why it is, uh, why it should be used for mobile application development for Android OS? Why? Because you can develop the application by using this Android Studio. You can run the application, you can debug, and you can test, and you can package the apps. So these are the features which are available in this official Android ID. And please remember one thing. So just note my words. So even you can develop the Android application by using some uh, platform such as Tunkable, Tinger.io, MIT App Inventor. Please remember that. So where you are, that's not a core Android application. So such applications will be developed by school students. It will not serve the purpose. You cannot customize such applications. To uh, develop an application which can be customized, you have to make use of Android Studio. As I mentioned earlier, it supports two programming languages such as Java and Kotlin. Along with the Android Studio, please remember, so in Android Studio, there is no need, if you want to see the output, for example, if you are executing a C program, if you are executing a Java, so where you are going to see the output in the console. Similarly, if you want to see the output of the application that you have developed, so it will provide a feature by name virtual devices. You can crea create your virtual mobile device there itself and you can see the output there itself. 
that's the advantage that's the main feature of android studio that is it provides the virtual devices you can create a virtual phone in that framework and you can observe the output there itself and you can visualize the layout for example i need to design something so the design visualization will be present there so the design layout will be presented as a feature these are the features of the framework that we are going to use on our throughout syllabus the framework that we are going to use is android studio that is that's an official id of android that comes under google the language that we are going to use is java so coming to the architecture so it's a important part android platform architecture what is this android platform architecture so please observe here where we have five layers five layers first layer is application layer first layer is application layer it's nothing but the applications will run in this layer for example just i will take a scenario here if you consider whatsapp that comes under this first layer it's an application whatsapp is an application so there are two types of applications one is system application other one is user application whatever you are going to use whatever you are using whatsapp facebook chat or other applications such applications will come under user application system applications means for example settings have you installed anything to for settings to change the settings in your device no it's a system application for every individual phone there will be a settings that's a system application okay such kind of applications will be running on the first layer that's why we call that layer as application layer first layer is application layer where you will be having two types of application one is system application other one is user application user application means wide variety of applications you have that may be game that may be video player that may be music player that may be whatsapp facebook chat whatever that comes under user application system application means which we which which we ha we have not installed which generally comes when you purchase the device such apps such applications such as security manager power management uh, settings such things are system application that's about the first layer system and user apps you or you can call it as application layer so next layer number 2 java api framework as i mentioned earlier there are lot of services lot of services which are readily available in the android studio that you must know how to use so your system applications will make use of those services will make use of those services such as notification manager alarm manager uh music player such services will be available in this java api framework so your applications will make use of those services to complete the task so application framework layer is the layer which provides the support for the applications which are present in the application layer so it has been written using java programming language that's why we have using the term java api framework application programming interface framework so next we have the third layer where native libraries and android runtime so i don't know how many of you watching this video know about java to run the java code we will make use of java virtual machine that is nothing but jvm similarly to execute the android application to execute the mobile application we will make use of dalvik virtual machine dvm so that will be present here that support will be present for every individual application that you are going to develop the java android runtime will be provided it's nothing but dalvik virtual machine so similar to the jvm that we use in our java so native library supports will be there native library support means the of uh, device drivers for example to work uh, to work with the uh, wifi connectivity have you installed anything no there should be a device driver should be installed in your device to have the connection with your wifi do a connect to uh, to make use of bluetooth there will be a bluetooth device driver so to make use of a browser there should be webkit device driver so to make use of graphics 
there will be open gl such kind of drivers such kind of libraries will be returned using c and c++ that comes in the third layer along with the runtime runtime means it's nothing but dvm dalvik virtual machine so that's about the third layer first layer is about application second layer is about the support to the application such as various managers third layer is about the various libraries are the device drivers along with the android runtime it's nothing but dalvik virtual machine so next hardware abstraction layer what is this hardware abstraction layer so if you consider your device if you consider your mobile where we have camera where we have bluetooth where we have gps where we have ram where we have memory uh, how those hardware parts will be utilized by your application by using this hardware abstraction layer how the ram usage will be ha happen in your mobile apps by using this hardware abstraction layer how your camera turns on when you click on that camera application by this hardware abstraction layer so this hardware abstraction layer is nothing but a interface between the hardware devices hardware components which are present in your mobile along with the application for example in my whatsapp i will click on camera icon it will turn on camera how based on this hardware abstraction layer camera itself is a separate thing component that is present in your mobile so whatsapp is a application so whatsapp is present in top layer camera is, is is a physical component that is present in your device how it will be embedded how they are connected by using this hardware abstraction layer so finally linux kernel so this is the hard part of this four layers so what is going to do with this linux kernel it is going to perform various management such as performance management power management security management so why that's why we call this as a hard part of your mobile app so if you divide this five layers first layer deals with applications so application can be categorized into two categories system applications and user application so next java api framework it's nothing but the various features of the services how your application can use those services so next native c++ library and android runtime c++ library means it's nothing but the device drivers which are required to make use of the features that are available in my phone along with the android runtime we are going to make use of dvm it's nothing but dalvik virtual machine so hardware abstraction layer as i mentioned earlier there might be wide variety of hardware components there might be different sensors or different components which may be available in your mobile how those components can be used by using this hardware abstraction layer your application can use those hardware components so the linux kernel it will be the hard part of your android application so it which will perform various management such as power management memory management <coughs> security management so those things will be taken control by this linux kernel this is the hard part of this architecture so architecture can be divided into five layers as mentioned in this diagram so coming to versions so presently we are using android 12 as of as on 2022 the version that we are going to that we are using is android 12 so as per the syllabus as per the contents that is present in your syllabus so so firstly we started with honeycomb the version is 3.0 which was released in the year february 2011 next ice cream sandwich in october 2011 jelly bean in 12 2012 likewise we have wide variety of versions uh, starting from 3.0 till 9.0 which is present in your syllabus so now we are using 12.0 okay so which is nothing but android p android r okay so what is this version sir why the keep the those people will keep on updating the android versions so why because so if you don't update your android version means your device your smartphone or your smartwatch will not be compatible with the new application that going to emerge that's why you must update why because what are the some there might be some drawbacks or some failures or some missing features may be available in marshmallow which will be overcome by using nougat likewise they will keep on updating the android versions un unless until that reaches the saturation as of now it has not reached the saturation till the present version that we are using is android p 
12. So this is the APA level. So the minimum APA level that we should now use in our devices is 28 or 29. So the minimum APA level is 28 that you must have in your device while developing any application. So these are the various versions. The version started with Anikum, ice cream sandwich, jelly bean, Kit Kat, lollipop, marshmallow, nougat, Oreo and pre. So the presently using version is Android 12. So now last with respect to this introduction, this is the last topic that is what are the challenges that we will come across while developing the Android applications. First one is, I guess you have seen new mobile app, mobile phones where it is somewhat like a, a laptop where you can fold. Some mobile devices, the screen orientation is big. Some mobile devices, the screen has a screen orientation is very less. So we need to, your application, the application that you are going to develop should accommodate this multi-screen world. Those, for example, it may be a folding uh, uh, device or it may be a stride or it may be horizontal, it may be vertical. So you cannot state that my application will work only for the devices with horizontal orientation. My application will work only for the devices with 4 centimeter height, 6 centimeter width. Such constraints you cannot find, you cannot mention. So your application, the application that you are going to develop should fix that multi-screen world. Different devices with different screen orientation will appear, but your application should fit. That is the first challenge that appears while developing the Android app development. So next one, getting the performance means the memory usage, the power usage, such things should be considered while developing an application. Okay, so your application should perform just I guess if you develop, if you open if your battery performance preferences in your devices, it will show how many various applications have used your battery, have consumed your battery power. So such thing, th that thing should be considered. Why? Because I am running an application which consumes my 50% of battery means who is going to install your Android app? No one is going to use. Similarly, keeping the code and user secure. So this is the main, main attribute out of, out of this file that is, so if someone is downloading your application, someone is using your Android app means they should be secure. Why? Because nowadays we are doing a transaction over our mobile phones using various uh, uh, applications such as phone pay, Google pay, Amazon pay. Okay. So if the data or the transaction details are the details which are present in our mobile phone or the contact details or the uh, multimedia details are fetched by my application means that will be a threat. So please remember one thing, the users, the viewers who are watching this video, kindly download any mobile application. For example, if you are using Android applications means, Android phone means, kindly download only the applications which are available in Google Play Store. So only for such application, the security checks are being done. For remaining application, don't, don't, don't download or don't install any application directly in the form of APK file. So that may harm your device as well as that may get the data that is present in your device. Finally, it should be compatible. For example, I am developing an application for now advanced Android 12, but it should be compatible with the previous version, Marshmallow. Or Kit Kat, Lollipop. So you should you should not ignore the previous versions. Even you have to consider the previous version and you have to update the features to be compatible with the present version. That's also one challenge. Whatever the application that you are going to develop should be compatible with the old users. So finally, understanding the market and the users. As I mentioned earlier, present the global market for mobile application is wonderful, guys. So 95% Indians are using the smartphones, okay? So especially 95% smartphones with Android operating system. So this subject, this subject will, will have a huge weightage and will be, will be a great asset. Why? Because 95% users who are using smartphones are Android based means just imagine how many applications will evolve, how many jobs will be created. 
So that's the market of Android applications presently in India. With respect to world concerned, 71% users are Android based. Thank you.